Welcome to my series on learning 3D LUT Creator. Today we're going to be tackling that last tab that we haven't covered yet, the masking tab. And I hope that when we're done, you'll agree with me that the masking tab is quite a formidable tool. Now, this week we're going to be talking about how to use it to make masks. And next week, I'm going to show you how to snag those masks away from 3D LUT Creator so that you can use them in Photoshop in whatever kind of adjustment layer you would like, even without the LUT. So you can use 3D LUT Creator as both a LUT Creator and a Mask Creator. Now, if you'd like to refresh yourself on some topics that we've covered in the past, I'm going to leave a link above to the entire 3D LUT Creator series thus far. And if you find content like this useful, I would truly appreciate your support by having you subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. If you have a little extra time, a comment's always appreciated as well. On to the video. Today we're going to have a look at the masking tab in 3D LUT Creator. So let's click over to that tab, and it's the last one in this row. As usual, we're presented with a fairly intimidating and unfamiliar interface. At its core, though, it really isn't difficult, and the masks it can make are quite powerful. I'm going to expand the mask interface area like so, so we can get a better look at it. There are two parts of this interface that are most important to us for masking. The first is this top area where the mask is actually constructed, and the second is this area where we decide where the mask is to be placed. Let's start with the placement part. With 3D LUT Creator, you get to make only one mask for each LUT version, and you can place that mask at multiple places in the chain of tabs, as you can see here. To keep it simple, we're going to keep the mask at the end, which means the mask affects the changes in all the tabs that you've adjusted. But how do you move that? Where is the control for that? Well, it's right here, Mask Destination, and it's set to All. So it affects the changes in all the tabs. We can move that to several of different options. And you can see it will move where the mask is applied. But again, let's keep it simple and put it at the end of the chain and mask all of our changes, knowing that we can adjust its position from this drop-down menu. So now let's bring a photo into 3D LUT Creator and look at the area where we actually build the max that we want. So I'm going to bring an image in from Photoshop. There we go. And we're going to look at this mask building area. Now in this drop down menu, we can choose what parameter we want to make the mask from. So for example, we can make a mask based on luminance, but we can also make masks based on the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel, cyan, magenta, yellow, black. This is another parameter which we haven't discussed before. Luminance based on color, based on saturation, based on the warmth of the color, and a whole host of things that you know, get a little more advanced and, you know, I'm not even really very used to some of these. Uh, but you can build a mask based on so many parameters. And this is very different than Photoshop, where the masks are based on where you paint or where you select, though you can turn a channel into a mask. Here you can make a mask based on a multitude of parameters. Let's leave it on luminance for the moment. And in this portion, you have a histogram based on this parameter. So for example, in luminance, you have a histogram based on going from dark to light. And you can tell where in your image you are by just running over the image. So this will tell you the luminance of the area in the image, which you'll see in a moment we can use to make and tailor our mask. It'll be obvious what I mean in just a minute. Let's say, for example, we wanted to use the blue channel. 
So this is telling us that it's the blue channel we're on, just as a visual indicator. And you can see the histogram changed. I'm going to go back again to luminance. See how that histogram changed dramatically? This is now a histogram based on the blue channel. And you can see where the specific colors, this goes from darker to lighter, but you can see where the specific colors are. Likewise, if we wanted to use, for example, CMYK yellow, you can see there's not very much yellow. There's probably some yellow right in here and maybe right in here. And you can see what part of the image you can tailor your mask on, as we'll see in just a moment when I start the tailoring. So let's go back to luminance for a moment. Actually, you know what? With that nice blue shirt, I'm going to go to blue. So again, here we have our blue histogram, which looks at how much blue channel there is. And we can run our eyedropper over the image and see where any portion of our image lies. So our shirt obviously has a lot of the blue channel. Surprisingly, there's a lot of blue in my face. But out here in the plants and the shrubbery, very little blue. Now, you know, we can confirm that because if you remember, there's a few shortcuts to look at the individual channels. Control 2 is the RGB channel, and then Control 3, 4, and 5 are the RGB channels, the red, green, and blue channels. So I'm going to hit Control 5. There we go. And this will show us our blue channel. And you can see, as you might expect, almost no blue out in here where it's dark, where it's bright. There's a lot of blue. So you can visualize what parts you'd be masking out. So I'm going to hit Control-2 to bring it back to the RGB composite. And you'll notice there is a line up here. I was playing around before. That's why I had to reset it. And a point here and a point here. With a line all the way up, the mask is white or everything shows. You can start to pull points down. You can add points by clicking. Right-clicking will take them away. And we know that basically most of the blue in me and the shirt are, are in this hump here. And so what we can do is say, add a point right around here. Grab this point and bring it, if I put it there, it'd be a very sharp cutoff. I can sort of feather it a little bit by having a gentle curve in there. And we now have masked out all these components of the blue channel. Up here, there's a little preview button. We can preview the mask that we made in just like two seconds. And you can see the black areas are masked out and the white areas will show through. Now, if we wanted to include some of this, we can actually adjust this live, which is a really nice aspect. And we can see how our, our mask is forming that way. When we like what we have, we can turn off the preview. And now we have a mask that basically contains the blue shirt and my skin. So let's say we went, I'm going to turn the mask off by turning that little button off. Let's say we went to the channel mixer and we wanted to make some changes to the shrubbery. Let's say we wanted to turn, I don't know, we wanted to turn some of these greens to look more dried out. Let's see what happens if we move stuff around a bit. in terms of the greens. 
There. So now it looks like the background is all dried out. But look what happened to my shirt and to some extent to my skin. All that color has changed because I changed the channels with the channel mixer. But let's say I like that blue shirt. Well, we made that mask, right, for my shirt and my skin, which now looks really deathly pale. I'm going to turn that mask on. And lo and behold, the area that was masked out, which is basically me and my skin and my shirt, now don't have any changes. But these shrubberies back here continue to have that dried out look that we made in the channel mixer. So if I turn the channel mixer off, you'll see the effect goes away. Turn the channel mixer back on, we have the channel mixer effect. So we've managed to make a pretty unique mask. I'm going to turn this off for a moment, get our greens back, and we can reset this and just see that for example, we can make a luminance mask. And these masks can be fairly complicated. I mean, I made it pretty simple by just moving one point. But for example, I mean, I'm not saying, I don't know what I'm masking here exactly, but you can add multiple points and decide, you know, that you want only certain areas of luminance to show. And again, the higher the point, the more of that luminance shows, the lower the point, the less of that luminance shows. So for example, this particular mask gives us a very odd masking because I just made it randomly. Uh, but again, you know, you can make all sorts of types of masks here on the fly, uh, looking at the mask being formed in real time and again, there's just, yeah, the mask is white there. There are just so many options here uh, that you can use masking on. You can mask it based on saturation. This blue is quite saturated. Well, actually, the greens are more saturated than I thought as well. You can make masks based on color. Here's another way that would be very easy to mask my blue shirt rather than using the blue channel. Let's let's give that a try. What if I was to Let's see what that would look like in terms of a mask. So yeah, that's that's a really a neat mask in terms of just my shirt if you wanted to keep out uh my skin and so on and just affect my shirt so based on color and again we can you know you can adjust this to be very specific uh, about certain colors in the mask actually if I was just going for the for the shirt this would probably even be a better way than the blue channel because when I'm using the blue channel I'm actually masking based on the blue component of the channel which can affect other colors. It just doesn't happen to as much in this particular instance because the shirt is so blue. But here, rather than picking the blue component of all the colors, which is what the blue channel would be, I'm actually picking just one very specific color region. And that is the colors between here and here. So you can make really uh, tons of masks that are very unique and adjust them on the fly to see what you're getting. Now, by the way, if we want to invert our mask, we can come right over to this Invert button, and you can see we could invert the mask. So, now I'm going to turn off the mask preview. Let's turn on that effect of the channel mixer turning everything brownish, and we're going to send the LUT to Photoshop. And so here is the LUT. There's without the effect. There's with the effect. And you can see I was masked out, or the blue shirt was, was masked out. 
Now, there's one little thing here. That mask that we made is internal to 3D LUT Creator. And when it sends the LUT over, it sends the LUT over as a straight LUT, but without the effect of the LUT being applied to the masked out area. But apparently, we have no access to that mask. That mask is internal to 3D LUT Creator. Now, if we did have access to that mask, that would be a really fantastic thing because we could further modify the mask in Photoshop to affect the LUT effect, to affect the LUT effect, to change the effect of the LUT. But more importantly, if we had access to that mask, we could use 3D LUT Creator basically as a masking machine, even if we didn't need a LUT, to make really neat and unusual masks, grab the mask and get rid of the LUT, and use the mask for our own purposes in Photoshop. And that is possible. And next week, I'm going to show you how that's done very easily. Well, I do hope you found this video useful. And really, the best way, once you've watched this, to learn the masking tab in 3D LUT Creator is just to open the software and play around with it. And like I said, next week, I'm going to be showing you how to grab that mask right out of 3D LUT Creator's hands and be able to use it anywhere on any layer in Photoshop that you'd like. Now, if you enjoy content like this, I'd really appreciate it. I know I've asked before, but I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.